Hi, we're Sue and Mike from On A New Tack, and we're in Stock Island in Florida. Yeah, it's right next to Key West. It's where uh, Sail Away Catamarans uh, has their Key West base. Um, we are here for the North American debut of the Vision Yachts Triple Four, 444. It's a 44-foot, uh, three-cabin uh, boat that's really ma made for liveaboard uh, cruisers, cruising couples. Uh, could very well be the perfect boat for cruising couples. And we're about to give you guys a tour and show you all the neat features that make us think that. Vision 444. Um, one of the things that stood out to us when we first walked down here is how wide it is. Um, it, it's hard to demonstrate in video, but like it, the opening of the doorways and the walkways is just it's really nice. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through just some of the things that we have seen. There's some one of the things that we were really interested in finding out about was how much storage was on the boat. Um, so there are a few uh, shell lockers that are actually pretty deep, a lot deeper than we expected. Um, I'll put my hand like, all the way in there and that's touching the back of the, the shelf. Yeah, so we'll pretty decent amount of storage there. Um, this is kind of an area that is being used for routers and, and wiring, um, but you could put a little bit of extra uh, storage in there depending on how you wanted to use it. Um, so that these lockers are, this first locker is shelving. There's really decent sized shelves in here. And then two lockers are like that. And then the third has a hanging storage. So pretty uh, good amount of, of clothing to be stored in there. And then there's some shelves up above. Quite similar to the ones over the bed. And then one thing that, we, that was very difficult to see from the videos uh, that we've seen previously is the amount of storage that's in this cabinet. Um, there is, I don't know if you want to come around, the hanging sure. side over here is, uh, it's got like short hanging and then a few shelves and then uh, and more shelves over here, which is a pretty decent amount of storage. The owners of this uh, boat have been living aboard for a while now and don't even have every bit of it full, which is pretty impressive. Uh, back in here we have washer-dryer combo and a couple more storage areas. Pretty deep shelving as well. Um, and I like the use of bins that they're doing to get a lot of stuff in there and keep it organized. Uh, there is a little uh, spot where you can put some toiletries on a shelf or like fold some clothes temporarily with a mirror. The owners of this boat have had put it into use and have had to come up with some good ideas that might be possible uh, updates for future models and one of the thoughts that they had was maybe pulling this mirror out and putting a cabinet for storage behind it like making it a, a like medicine, a cabinet. medicine cabinet where the door opens with a mirror on it. I think that's a great idea. I also noticed a lot of, and I'll let Mike talk more about the electrical, but there's a lot of um, outlets throughout the cabin. This area is the shower yeah. and head area. It's electric and you just push a button and it, it fills up the tank and flushes, which is amazing compared to the one on our boat that we have right now where you have to pump it out. Um, makes you have a lot better peace of mind that it's actually flushing properly. And then the shower is, is great. It's big. Um, I think this is bigger than our shower at home. <laughs> I don't think, I know it is. Um, with a nice little bench seat um, and nice shower head. A spot over here to hang clothes or fold clothes temporarily or put your towel. So this is us both in the shower, which is really nice too. Like Sue said, it's bigger than our shower at home, which I think is a true statement. 
Uh, and I'll show where the camera's sitting now because there's hanging there and there's some rails here to keep things in place while you're underway. But Sue is sitting, I don't know if we could both sit at the bench at the same time, but we can both be in here at the same time. That's how big this is. Um, really nice shower head. And, uh, and it, has a, it has a bed seat. The bed seat has the same padding that the outside of the boat has. It's really yeah, the EVA foam. That's pretty much it for the owner's side. No, I want to show them. Oh, okay. There's, there's more. Another thing that I forgot to point out. <laughs> um, one of the, the first things that I noticed when I walked down in here is the, the nice workmanship that's done on the, on the doors, the trim around the doors. Um, Go ahead and stand in the middle of the door, the of the door to show how wide it is. Yeah, how wide these door openings are. It really is hard to, to demonstrate in the video, but when, the first thing you feel when you walk down here is how much open space there is. You don't feel like you're in a boat. Um, but um, the flooring that Thomas and Terry chose is really beautiful. It's all the, the woodwork throughout the boat and the surfaces are round. There's guardrails everywhere. It, it just you can tell that a lot of time and effort was put into the thoughtfulness of how this boat was laid out and how it's going to work undersea. Little touches like these lights that are up here, which I don't know how to do them. I saw, uh, there we go. You slide across them and then you can go between a night light and um, bright, full bright. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing, but there we go. <laughs> so you can kind of see there's a couple different options. And that again, that's just included. Um, and also a lot of big windows in here. There's a really large um, hatch hatch over the bed, and the reason for that is because the engine is under the bed, so that they can get the engine out if necessary. But it makes for a really nice light in the in the cabin. Yep, there's that. There's the hatch above here, and then while we're down here, just to kind of give example of, of what Sue was talking about, the craftsmanship of these. Of the woodwork and you can see these are nice and tenoned and this is really really smooth it's it's really nice work sue and i own a cabinet shop and uh, i would be proud of this work if it was ours so um and the um i know james turner is the boat builder he talks about this in his videos um they use a this this style of oak um they cut the wood in, in, in this pattern so that if there is any you ever have any damage you can replace it and blend it in very easily because you don't have like these big swooping grain grain lines that you have to blend and it's also unfinished you get it just gets oiled so again um, that's kind of a tedious thing is to, if you ever have to do anything with the uh, clear coat but this is not uh, not really an issue because you can just oil it and if you get something on it you can kind of bleach it out and then re-oil it So the workshop is, is through here, and um, Thomas and Terry are, are using this for a storage of their um, their spares for the engines and the generator. They have they put a hanging rod in the back side there. They have their fishing gear hung up on the outside uh, part of the hull. Um, you can see that that vise that comes with the boat, and then you have all these storage. Basically, everything that you see in here is comes with the boat, aside from the personal belongings, obviously. Um, that's their dish bag, which has moved in here. They usually have it in the, um, in the cockpit area, but because it's at the boat show, they have that put away. Um, and so that there's, I don't think there's usually much on the floor, probably just that big, um, tool chest that's back there. Cause you don't want that to fall off if you, uh, if you're hitting some heavy weather. All right. I'm going to show you. Another great feature um, that is present on the triple four. So in each side, each hall, there is this kind of storage cabinet. So all the things that you have to access, uh, the through holes, filters, uh, the black tank, um, all those items are in here. So I'll let Sue pan around and show that. But you have your AC unit up top. You have uh, a filter there, which I'm not sure what it's for. It says no smell filter. So I guess that gets filters out smells. <laughs> I don't know what it's for. Um, you have an emergency build right here. And then you, there are black tank and then you have a pump for the cooling. And then you have your raw water strainers. All your through holes are right here. The bottom of the boat doesn't have like a deep well like you have in a lot of boats. 
because it's all compartmentalized uh, into the fiberglass. So if you were to hit something and have some kind of c catastrophe, the chance of actually taking water on is that much smaller because you have, it's, you know, it's compartmentalized. There's one um, floor plate back there behind Sue, and that one is for the, uh, the water tank. So the sending unit and all, the sending unit and all that is accessible there. But it's, it makes for a really nice clean, uh, makes for a really nice clean floor. You don't really have any obstructions or things to step on. Um, I'd imagine you're going to spend most of your life on a boat like this barefoot and you, it'd be great. Uh, and we'll see that up on, uh, the, the top side, you know, shows those same characteristics. Okay, we're going to go down to the guest hall. And Susie walking down the stairs. <laughs> so to show that they're kind of like uh, household stairs. These stairs are really nice. They have, they're, they're lighted for nighttime with LED lights on the back side. And the treads are made of the same uh, nice wood finish. One thing I do really like about them is how they're curved and flat. They're not like a lot of books that you walk down the stairs on. They have that lip at the edge that is for safety reasons, but it's very uncomfortable to walk on. And you have this handle, so it kind of yeah, accomplishes yeah, that. Handles, um, so it feels very comfortable. It feels almost like you're walking up and down stairs at your home. We'll start in the aft cabin. So in the aft cabin, uh, we have, from a storage standpoint, there's a bench. And over here, there's actually a bench next to this bed and also the owner's bed and uh, that's a really nice touch but you but the fact that you can actually open up and, and store things in them uh, is also really nice they don't even have anything in there <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's also a hanging locker with a couple shelves which uh, is a pretty good size and I believe two uh, equally sized shelving units with three shelves in each and Thomas and Terry have been living on this boat for about four months, so there's still spare cabinets. That's a good sign. Yeah, that was one of the concerns that we had because we hadn't seen the boat in person is how much storage it really had, and we've been pleasantly surprised. Thomas and Terry chose to do a version of the boat that has a smaller aft head, in so it's a wet head instead of a, the head like we're, the rest of the ones in the boat are. Um, and the reasoning for that is so that they had a little bit more pantry storage, which we think is a great idea. Uh, there's three heads in this boat. You don't, they don't all need to be separate shower and, and toilet. Um, Especially if it's a liveaboard and they're going to have guests on it on occasion. Right. You don't need to have, you know, why have all that space taken up for, you know, the couple times a year that you have guests on. Yeah, and if they really didn't like using that, if they really didn't like using that um, wet head, they could always use it one or the other restroom heads <laughs> oh, and what that gained them is this really nice pantry which has a lot of storage um, and they said this was really life-saving for them over the, the um, crossing they just came they came across from South Africa to uh, bring the boat here to Florida so they had to stock up on a lot of food and you can see you can fit a lot in here and they have it really nicely organized so back here they have the same is it this cabin? Yep, they utilities. Have the same utility cabinet that was on the other side with that boat. So nice everything located in one spot, which is really nice. And a couple more or one more storage space right here for essentials. Um, and then the access to so right above at the top of the stairs is the the fridge and freezer combo and in here they have access to all of the pumps and compressors compressors that are needed for that there's a lot of um conduits run around the boat so when you when there's a line a water line or electrical it doesn't just go through cavities in the boat it's actually in an actual conduit so i think we can actually see that in here so probably not easily uh, you, uh you really can't. So back there where those water lines are, they actually go 
through a conduit. It's not just going in between bulkheads. So if you need to, if you need to fish something through later on, it's simply a matter of pushing it through the conduit and it's going to come out the other end, which is amazing because that's one of the worst things on our boat now is trying to get something to go through. And there's a little bit of wire loom that's used as conduit. And that's like barely useful because it just gets hung up on all the edges. So this space is pretty neat. This is a, another guest cabin, and they have the bed elevated and sideways. Um, it's elevated so it can get placed up over the bridge, correct? Yeah. And uh, so because of that, they were able to put some storage here at the end of the bed, so there's some additional shelving, pretty good amount of shelving, and pretty deep shelving lockers in here. And some additional shelving over here. Quite a bit of shelving storage for a guest cabin. And behind this door is one more hanging box. There's a hanging space and a couple more shelves. So this guest cabin has quite a bit of storage. And it also has a bench, which I didn't even notice before. There's a bench here behind the door. And then nice, uh, the bed has nice steps on either side, so you can kind of get up there and place to plug in. The light switches are really neat on this boat. The fans, um, oh. the, the, the lights, most of the things that you see are included, which is really amazing, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, All little touches. Yeah, a lot of little touches that are just really just built in, like things that you would need if you were actually going to live on this boat, which is, so it's built for... Uh, a live aboard couple to be able to you know have this as their floating home so there's a lot of things that uh, if you're building for that market you don't it's different than a charter market so you're gonna just it just makes sense you're gonna everybody that buys from you is gonna want to have a lot of these features yeah live aboard couple or even with one or two kids sure um, and then the forward head is similar to the owner's cabin head um, with a, it's in the space that the work area is on the other side of the boat, but nice, really nice, large shower. I can, with again, a nice bench. Sit. <laughs> this is also larger than our shower at home. <laughs> yeah, this is larger than our shower at home. And really nice windows. Good, great, good. You get a good air, uh, breeze through here, which is really nice. In a lot of the different clips, you're going to see these outlets throughout the boat, and there's a lot of them. And uh, they are a combination, they can fit, you know, US, which is would be the inside here, and then your ground is up top, or it can fit like the European style plug. And you can see there's a sticker on there of what voltage is going to this particular outlet. And this boat is wired to have both one, 120 and 220 uh, service on it. And the because they're planning on traveling all over the world, and they're going to have different uh, power they can plug into uh, depending where they're at. So this will supply uh, both of those. There's also uh, a USB port built into every one of these, which is really nice too because everything, our cameras, phones, right, everything plugs into USB to charge, so you have those everywhere. Okay, we are in the the galley and salon area. It's really spacious. Yeah, um, we kind of set the camera up over there and we're standing back to, to give the sense of scale to how much room is in here. And you see the same cabinetry, the same um, oak, uh, with that green pattern to it. Um, I'm getting an amazing breeze right now, which is nice because it's in Florida, it's always hot. Um, they have a uh, combination gas and electric um, plate. And then they have a, their, their oven is gas, but then can also use electric broiler. So it allows them to use both. So if they can't get propane somewhere, they still have their cooking appliances. And then they have a microwave up on the countertop. Um, a lot, you'll notice a lot of countertop space, which is really nice if you have a microwave or if you want to get a, a nice baker that was not built in. Um, they're talking about adding cabinets up above this area, which might be nice. Yeah, more storage, mm -hmm. right? Just kind of when you're on a boat, especially if it's for someone that's living aboard, the more storage, the better. There's um, 
Two sinks. Two sinks. Yep, two sinks. Yeah, two sinks. Um, salt water and fresh water and a filter. Salt water, fresh water, filter. Filtered water, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to mix those up. Yeah. Um, and the storage in here is pretty nice as well. So this is a really nice big deep cabin cabinet. Um, they have a built-in ice maker, which I believe is an option. You can do that with with that, or you can add another cabinet. Um, over here, we have. Oh, this is the other side access. Oh, is that the same? Yeah. That's cool. But I was like, how's it so deep? <laughs> and then a little bit of storage underneath. Oh, look at that! Nice little trash bin. That's no, that's out. nice. And some drawers. Some drawers are. Very smooth. Nice slides. Four decent sized drawers. Did you talk about the oven? I talked about it, what it can do. I didn't open it. If you want to open it, we can. So electric and gas. What, electric? Broiler. Broiler and gas. Yes, oven. oven. Yeah. And then the freezer. Two drawers. This is a very, feels very sturdy, strong refrigerator freezer unit. Like there's like there's a latch. She has. <laughs> like, she's she's about to break their boat. <laughs> um, but as you can feel it's very high quality, and that's just really nice. You have a shelf, adjustable shelves. Um, oh yeah, cool. Like you can fit quite a bit in there. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the windows or... Lighting. Yeah, so the windows are all glass, which is really nice, right? They're not going to scratch or craze or do anything nasty. Obviously, very, very strong. Uh, the hatches that are built into them, I think, are, like, key. You need to have that kind of thing. I'm getting a ton of wind right now, and it's from the one that's above me. It's not from this one, and it's amazing how much wind's coming in. Uh, so I think it would be really nice if you're at Anchorage and you, you have just a crazy amount of wind coming through to keep everything cool. It does have air conditioning, um, but uh, you know most people are not going to be using that all the time. It's just too costly, and or it's just going to require a lot of uh, diesel usage or whatever. Run down your batteries. So if we go from the other direction, yeah, one thing I didn't mention was the nice little like spice and condiment storage space at the end of the island or the peninsula. It's pretty nice. Uh, what else? You want to talk about the Kitchen table? Yeah, we'll talk about the table and then we'll talk about the nav station. They have a really um, beautiful tabletop, again, the, kind of the wood theme throughout the boat. You can see it's adjustable height, so it can be dropped down for an uh, additional day bed. It's great if you're on watch, although I think most people would probably lay out in the, co in the uh, cockpit. And the seating is, all of the seating that we've noticed that we've sat on throughout the boat is very comfortable. It's like soft, uh, thick foam. Seems like high quality. I'm not an expert in that area. <laughs> um, but it's leather, standard. It seems like a good amount of space for a family. Yeah, and I think this table's not all the way up, if I had to guess. Yeah. I think it goes up higher, and it looked that way from the, the clasps underneath, too. Yeah, it's a little tight on my knees. And I think the other thing that's really nice is you have these, what ends up in just being big shelf areas. So if you have appliances, like a bread maker, or you have a countertop ice maker instead of something built in, you have a ton of place to be able to put those just on different horizontal surfaces all over. All right, so I'm in the nav station, which is another unique feature. It faces forward, which again, if you're actually using it as a nav station, you're gonna want that. Um, Thomas and Terry chose to have a second, uh, they did a B&G electronics package, and they chose to have a second chart plotter here, which is really nice, really bright. Um, they can set it to a night mode when they need to. This is a red light, so they said that when they're on passage, they'll just turn this light on and keep all the lights in here turned off. Uh, but they have duplicate wind instruments and basically the same thing that's up at the helm. You see here, you see your fuel gauges, the water, um, the black tanks, the controls for the generator, the controls for the Victron Energy for the battery, uh, for the um, solar. Um, and then they have a, they did a, um, a 
side uh, radio with sideband, and then um, they have their um, they also have their VHF and their um, radio, regular audio radio. For USB, and this one has both 120 and 240 plug-in, which is really nice. Um, this I should explain because it's really unique, and I'm going to start talking about the really technical things now that I think are unique about this boat, and this is from my engineering, my electrical engineering background. So this boat is 24 volt bus. It uses lithium ion batteries. It has, I think, 625 amp hours of 24 volts, so it's actually a lot of energy, and that's standard, which I don't know of any other boat maker that does that as a standard, and I kind of find that insane these days that nobody does it. A lot of them offer it as an upgrade, um, but it's just becoming one of those things where it just makes sense uh, with that technology. So in addition to that, the 24 volt bus, what you have up here are these really nice switches. And they can be you know, customized, whatever it says on here can be customized for however the boat gets built. But the neat thing is when you turn these on and off, it's actually going down to uh, inside this panel that's the front side. So in here, you have all these industrial, they're called DIN relays, and they're almost like a dime a dozen. I mean, they're, they're really not they're, not, they're not free, but there are a bunch of them out there, and they're really easy to replace. So if something breaks, if your, if your breaker starts uh, having problems, you can just get this, and it doesn't have to be from Hager. It could be from any number of companies that make compatible uh, relays. So it's a really well thought out system and that's something that's really impressed me with this boat and the things that James and his team have done. Um, it's uh, very unique. I haven't seen anything else like it. The batteries and the, and the chargers and all that stuff are underneath the cushions here. So you do lose out on the storage that you would normally have in this area. But um, there's ventilation here to keep all that cool and uh, it's just a nice central spot. The TV that is above the nav station is, uh, is included as well, and that can uh, mirror the screen for the chart plotter. So you can actually do things up there. If it was me, I would even have like an HDMI cable run to somewhere near the, uh, this table. So if you wanted to use your laptop and, and have that as a second screen, or play a movie from your laptop, or, or whatever, have a DVD player, whatever you're going to use as your source of entertainment, you'd be able to plug in there and have it go up on this TV. I also think it'd be really cool if you could make this so that it would swing around and then lock in this position so that you can watch TV from outside. But there might be some mount that allows that. Uh, I don't know. So um, why don't you take a step back and this, this, is all, this all closes off. It's two big sliding doors. So this really, it's the first time I've used these, actually. They're, they slide really nicely, but this can all be closed off when you are in you know, bad weather or, or leaving. Um, and then when you are basically any other time, you can have this open, and it makes this a huge room, and it flows through into the cockpit. So we are on Contiki. We are with uh, owners Thomas and Terry. Uh, they purchased this boat, picked it up in... Uh, South Africa and sailed it over. So we're going to ask them some questions about the process and uh, what the experience has been like so far. So thank you for letting us take some of your time. I appreciate it. Oh no, it's been really fun to pleasure get to, to meet you guys. Yeah, to meet you. Congratulations on your new home. It's awesome. It's thank really you. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you started from an interesting place. You purchased from uh, Blueprints and Designs, and there wasn't an actual hall. Correct. We saw a poster in our broker's office. It was just a simple poster with a beautiful design. We asked a broker what it was because we were interested in other boats. He said it was the vision. So one month later, I jumped on a plane to South Africa with Tommy and Amy, and we went to go see what uh, vision was all about. That's awesome. And Tommy and Amy are the brokers from Sailway Academy. Sailway, Sailway. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. And uh, what was uh, what was it that factored into your decision to move forward with what you saw? Is there anything that really stuck out about it? Well, you met the builder, and you were convinced. Um, that he was the right guy. He was very yeah. design, design oriented. Very confident. He was uh, passionate about what he was doing. He was wanting to get into production cats. Uh, we did see the first, uh, the hull of the first boat. We did see the quality of the work and met the team that were putting the boats together. And 
we were uh, intrigued and so that decided was to move forward. James Turner, correct? Yes. James yes. Turner. Yeah. Vision Yachts, yeah. I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about James because it sounds like he is really open to making modifications as he just throughout the process. So was there anything in particular that you asked for differently? Oh, we asked for a lot. <laughs> we got most of it. <laughs> but um, one of the things was the store. The store was originally it was just going to be a single window here and then a slider. Um, we had seen a door similar to this on other boats uh, and asked if that was possible and he got his design team working on it and came up with a solution and now it's a standard feature it's on all the boats. just changed the whole vibe of the boat so yeah. for a good. Yeah, Sue and I, uh, it's a big feature for us too that we've noticed on a lot of the boats that are out there and it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things where it changes the, the whole feel of the, of the cabin. And, uh, it totally cockpit. does. I mean, uh, the cockpit and the salon area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. I think the other big thing that we requested was a pantry. So we took the bathroom uh, for the guest room, one of the guest rooms, cut in half, and made a pantry. And for liverboards, it's just, and, and for our crossing, it just served us really well. Yeah. So we have so, a wet head now instead of a full shower. Over yeah, there, which, and again, you don't have, it's usually just two of you, so it's right. really not much of a And there is another shower on that side, too, a full shower, so it's yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. I think it's a great design decision. Mm -hmm. It certainly seems like it would be the standard for people that are going to live on the boat. I agree. But that was the thing about James. You know, he was really receptive to new ideas, to changes, um, but he would also try to, to justify his viewpoint of things. So, you know, it was a give and take situation. But mm -hmm. I, I think you wouldn't get that kind of relationship with other builders, at least not in my experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. True. No, I was going to say a lot of a lot of the other builders um, that we've Very talked personal. to are you know you get what you get. You know it comes like this, and you can either take it or leave it. And so with James, we had a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to, to make decisions. Um, this tea table is one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. It makes a huge difference in just the feel of this this space. Yeah, we think so. Yeah, yeah and it's actually it's I think encouraging to hear that James will try to keep you on the straight and narrow. Right, if you're asking for something that's just like. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. We, we notice that in our business, we have to kind of make sure that people are not making decisions that they're going right, to be right. unhappy right. with. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So that's yeah. good. It sounds like it's a good, uh, good team. Yes, it is. Great, yeah. great relationship. So you talked about the crossing. That's a long crossing, and you guys are relatively new to sailing, so that's a that's a big, you know, kind of first-ish step. I know you did some, some delivery things while you were uh, kind of stuck in uh, South Africa mm -hmm. because of the COVID situation. You got there. Got to spend a lot more time in the area than you had planned. Yes, yes. Um, Thank, but what thankfully. Was, what was that? <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. We love South Africa. So. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. It makes mm -hmm. me want to go uh, check the place out, too. Mm -hmm. um, so what was it like, though? With that, that's uh, How many thousand miles is that? It was the over 6,000. Yeah, the crossing itself was about 6,200 yeah. uh, miles. Uh, but in addition to that, we sailed from the Seychelles to Madagascar. Cool back down to South Africa for a delivery, you know, just to get some more experience. That was a, not this boat. That, that was not yeah, this boat. Yeah, it was a different boat. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, then we had the opportunity to go to Namibia. We uh, went to a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, <laughs> look at that. There's a, there's I've a never seen one like that. Morning dove. Check yeah. the boat. There's a dove Oh, he's down the boat? Oh. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Cut. Yeah, so it, it was uh, the adventure of a lifetime, I think. And the it's crossing been, itself. It's yeah, the wonderful. crossing itself was amazing. I mean, the solitude that you enjoy out there, uh, and the Milky Way, and the, the comets, and we even saw a rocket launch from oh, that's there. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So it didn't scare you off? No, no, no not, at all. not at all. Not at all. I felt very privileged to be out there. I felt like yeah, it's something that everyone should experience, but, you know, it's just very yeah. nice, beautiful, beautiful. The funny thing to me is it's not just like crossing an ocean, it's kind of crossing an ocean at a diagonal, right? So yeah. that much further, you're, really exactly. like, you're crossing a hemisphere and an ocean. Yes. We made so, one yeah. turn, one turn when we got to <laughs> Brazil, you know? And uh, had it not been COVID, we probably would have been able to see St. Helena, Ascension, we would have made more stuff. Brazil, yeah. you know, Suriname. Um, you've been on the boat now about four months? Four months, yeah, October. October 12th, I think, yeah. What's the biggest surprise or something that you didn't expect from moving from uh, being a landlubber to being living on a boat? I guess my biggest thing is we really don't need that much, you know. In a, our house, we had houses before, and we just don't need all that stuff, you know. It's, it's, um, it's great.
great. Like, it's like I think for me, it's the lifestyle. I knew uh, from chartering uh, uh, both before that you know I would enjoy this, but I never knew that actually living on the boat, living in this environment, out in the open, snorkeling when I want to, fishing, yeah. you know, it is just it's so liberating. I can't say enough about it. It's a, a life that uh, we've longed for for years. You know, now we're living it. Awesome. I like what you uh, said, Terry, because I feel like as we get um, possessions, they end up possessing us a lot of times. Right? Absolutely. Because you have all this extra stuff you have to yeah, yeah. worry about, maintain, and there's a lot to be said for a simpler life. Um, it's a beautiful home, but it's um, it's just one thing. It's right? scaled yeah. back for sure. Yeah. It's scaled back, and it's, it is much easier to to, to maintain. It's, it's, yeah, it's all we need. We don't even need this much. And I was interesting because one of the big questions I had when looking at boats was how much storage is on the boat. Yeah. And your first answer is, well, you know what? You don't really need all that much. Stuff. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of storage on this boat. So as you, you guys, uh, you know, took your boat uh, all the way across yourself, took delivery, and a lot of people shy away from doing that because of the wear and tear it can bring onto the boat, right? You know, right after you get it. So did you experience any of that? Is there any any second guessing you have from that part of it? So the argument about the wear and tear, um, I counter that when you're actually living on the boat for the crossing, you're actually breaking things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, making adjustments, things like that. It gives you an opportunity to uh, really stress test your boat. You and, know? You, and to learn and your boat, to learn, to learn about it, boat. to understand right. the noises, the sounds, yeah, exactly. the, you the know, smells, what, the sounds, exactly. the, the vibrations, yeah. things like that. And um, I wouldn't have it done it any other way and I would strongly recommend yeah. anybody considering buying a boat in South Africa number one for the adventure number two for getting to know your boat and also you have you know experienced captain and, and a, yeah. at least one other crew member on there usually um, so if something does break you've got somebody that's done tons of crossings and can fix it or help you learn how to, to fix things and so it was really a good opportunity all around that's great that's yeah. great so what's the what's next on the plan I know you guys are going to go to some more boat shows. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. West, West Palm, Palm Beach. Beach. And then up to Annapolis Spring Show. Annapolis, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're going to go somewhere. Do you know where that's going to be at? We're going to stay in the uh, Chesapeake until November. Okay. And then that, uh, after November, we're going to go down south to Florida, Bahamas, and uh, eventually get down to Grenada and stay there for a full hurricane season. Okay. Great. So you'll so you'll probably try to get to Canada by July, August kind of time frame. Correct. Yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. And then um, um, eventually, probably after two years in the Caribbean, start a circumnavigation awesome. um, to to French Polynesia, and then on to back to South Africa. You know, oh, cool. that would be a five-year plan, six-year awesome. plan. You've gone through your major choices. You have this beautiful boat. Would you have done anything different? No, nothing major for sure. But, you know, we're happy. That's a good place to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <large person. laughs> no, I can't. I can't really think of what we would change. Yeah, we were pretty much happy with all the decisions we made and uh, how it was delivered. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for spending so much time with us this weekend. Thank you. And obviously, more than just this. this um, uh, this interview and you guys have been a wealth of information and, and thank you for opening up your home to us and everybody else that's going to be our pleasure through. our yeah. pleasure yeah. So, uh, i think the one thing about that is we love sharing our experience with the same with the people with the same twinkle in their eye the yeah. same you know vision so to speak of wanting to you know share our passion with them because that's how we were you know three years ago awesome. yeah uh, yeah well, that's yeah. great best of luck we're we're gonna try to check in on you guys on occasion and see I hope how so. things are going. I want to keep in touch for keep sure. An update. Yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.